you are listening to Grim and Stone, The Mountain Perspective. This podcast may contain objectionable language. Welcome to Grim and Stone, The Mountain Perspective. This is our take on what's happening in the world. How you doing, Stoney? <laughs> It's Monday. It's all of Monday. <laughs> Anything new and exciting happening in your life? Nope. I woke up again. That's all I ever asked for. Yeah. Found a dead chicken in the coot or in the pen this morning, so <clears throat> that was that was fun. I already looked checked that. No clue. Wasn't no fox. No idea. So, let's get into this. Probably choked on something. Probably. All right. Female soldiers honored at the Grand Old Opry. Outstanding. So, Nashville, Tennessee. This uh, this was posted yesterday. What what go uh, what does it take to become a part of the Grand Old Opry? For most, it takes commitment, practice, and hard work. The ability to sing helps. Because as we've known, there are people who have made it who cannot sing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for a very few, all it takes is an invitation. Fifteen female soldiers from Fort Campbell uh, were asked to share the stage with country singer Isla, Ayla Brown. I don't know who this person Never is. Never heard of her. As she made, oh, as she made her debut at the Grand Old Opry, all fifteen soldiers wore uh, combat patches indicating they served in a combat zone. Grand Old Opry is a weekly country music stage show in Nashville that has uh, been performed and broadcast on radio since 1925. The Opry has been called country's most famous stage and the show that made country music famous. And let's see, the soldiers provided a backdrop for Brown's song honoring female service members, Hero in Her Hometown. That's the name of the song. Uh, Brown said the song honoring women who serve our country is long overdue. Well, very cool. That's great. That's, 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 and it makes sense. I mean, Fort Campbell's like right down the road. Yeah. It's a half hour drive maybe. Maybe an hour. I, I drove a little fast, so. Yeah, it's uh, it's about time. So, big salute to our sisters in arms. And uh, now this one here, this is kind of an anniversary. It's a uh, 71st anniversary commemoration. Uh, let's see here. San Diego. Active duty, retired... See, active duty, comma, retired service members and civilians observed the heroism of World War II veterans at the 71st anniversary of the Battle of Midway uh, aboard the USS Midway Museum on June 1st. The Battle of Midway took place during June 4th and uh, through the 7th in 1942, where the U.S. Navy carrier... Strike forces prevented the Japanese from capturing control of Midway Island uh, in the Pacific. The victory proved to be a pivotal point in World War II and is an important marker in naval heritage. Let's see here. During the ceremony, 13 surviving veterans, along with family and friends of those who gave the ultimate sacrifice during the Battle of Midway, were honored by current military personnel and civilians for their extraordinary service 71 years ago. This event is to honor uh, veterans of Midway, said Copeman, that would be Vice Admiral Thomas Copeman, is to make sure the memory of the Battle of, Mi Battle of Midway and the heritage of what it stands for is not lost upon our younger generation of sailors. So very cool. It is. 71 years. It's crazy. So you figure all these guys are, if not 90, they're bumping it. 
but 13 of the of survivors good for them and uh, now for the famous vet now you don't know who it is okay let's let's no way oh my god yep oh. <laughs> uh. Today's famous veteran. Oh, man. Okay, let's see here if I can get rid of this stupid little... Let's thing. paint a little landmine The here. happy trees with the happy little landmines under them. <laughs> Bob Ross. Oh, man. Bob Ross is our famous veteran of the day. A quote from him. I was the guy who makes you scrub the latrine. The guy who makes you make your bed. The guy who screams at you for being late for work. The job requires you to be mean, to be a mean, tough person, and I was fed up with it. I promised myself that if ever I got away from it, I was never going to be that way anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. Oh, so, man. Bob Ross is known for producing uh, beautiful landscapes, his soft-spoken demeanor, and bushy facial hair. Uh, whenever anyone mentions the joy they get from painting, it's tough not to think of Bob of, of Ross smiling at the camera and filling hundreds of canvases with happy clouds, secret trees, and accidental bushes. <laughs> Even if you aren't a student of art, putting on an episode of The Joy of Painting will lull anyone into a total state of serenity. <laughs> what many people don't know is that one of the biggest influences on Ross's persona and painting technique was the 20 years wow. he spent in the Air Force, especially during his time as a drill sergeant. Uh, I, I can't even imagine Wow. Somebody turning on that show and going, hey, that guy was my D.I. <laughs> <laughs> Born uh, Robert Norman Ross and raised in Orlando, Florida, his first career move was enlisting in the Air Force at the age of 18. He was stationed at... How do we hell you pronounce that? Uh... Oh, that's that one in Alaska. Some Air Force Base. Eelson? Eelson? I don't know. We'll call it Eelson. I'm sure somebody will correct us. Uh, Air Force Base in Alaska, which is where he saw snow and mountains for the first time. In order to paint as uh, let's see, in order to paint as much as he wanted, he developed a quick painting technique including wet on wet oil painting. Ross credited William Alexander with teaching him the wet-on-wet -wet technique, which enabled him to paint 25 to 30,000 paintings over the course of his lifetime. Good Lord! <laughs> <laughs> During his 20 years in the Air Force, Ross reached the rank of Master Sergeant. He often commented in The Joy of Painting that his landscape choices were influenced by his time in Alaska. I developed ways of painting extremely fast, Ross said. I used to go home at lunch and do a, cu do a couple while I had my sandwich. <laughs> I'd take them back in the afternoon and sell them. Ross eventually discovered that he could earn more selling paintings than he could in the Air Force and quit. Wow. 20 years and quit. Well, I guess that would be a retire. Yeah. Upon his return to civilian life, Ross launched his famous program, The Joy of Painting. Each episode could be filmed about as quickly as he could paint, and he did, in, uh, he did the entire thing for free. His main source of income stemmed from, Bob, from the Bob Ross Foundation, which sold art supplies and taught painting. Uh, Ross secretly, or subsequently, uh, earned widespread fame and success but kept a low uh, profile. He passed away in 1995 from lymphoma, but his legacy endures. <laughs> so, Bob Ross. Wow. A big salute to you, sir. And uh, I don't think there's anybody who doesn't know who Bob Ross is. But I doubt if there's too many that knew he was a vet. 
20 year vet. 20 year vet and a DI. That's. I can't imagine. You need to pick up your stuff now. You need to straighten this footlocker. <laughs> oh, look, there's a little secret sock. Let's pick that up and put it over here. The secret sock. <laughs> <laughs> and the accidental boot smudge. Oh, man. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw that this morning, and I'm like, oh, my God. That's it. Boom. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not looking for anybody else. No kidding. All right. There's another good one down there, too. Was there? The second one there. Oh, really? Well, we just may have to do that one on uh, Thursday. Okay. All right. Your turn. Wow. <sighs> <clears throat> Tallahassee, Florida. Police use a taser to subdue and capture an escaped llama. <laughs> they're, they're mean. Uh, police in Tallahassee said they had to use a taser to capture the six-foot llama that escaped from its owner's pen and spit in officers' faces. Hey, well, well, it wasn't personal. That's what they do. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, yeah, yeah, this is gonna get like ticketed for, <laughs> you know, uh, misconduct or something. The Leon County Sheriff's Office deputies said they began hearing reports of a llama on the loose, running through Kilairn Lakes and on Bannerman Road Friday night. Uh, they had some sightings, but they weren't ever able to get their hands on it. They chased the llama for hours, finally capturing it Saturday morning. Uh, the llama's been reunited with its owner, who faces no legal action or fines for the escaped animal. It's legal to own a llama in the state of Florida, deputies said. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you worked on a llama ranch, uh, right? Uh, alpaca, actually. Oh, alpaca. But... Small version of a llama. Yeah, I was going to say, same critter, just tight, yeah. tighter packaged, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just as mean? Well, not quite as mean, but, uh, yeah, if you mess with their kids, uh, there's a lot of spin. <laughs> and then that... that I've that, never had to tase one. And then that toe <laughs> that they can use to, like, gut you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're vicious. They can be vicious. Now, this one, when you sent me the link... Caught my eye. <laughs> uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Man, these Southerners, they know they know how to have a good time. I guess. Yeah. Wild llamas and shit. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> the patient steals an ambulance and takes the paramedics on a wild ride. Uh, episode began at a hospital and ended when the patient crashed the ambulance into a chiropractor's office near Decatur and fled on foot. Uh, two DeKalb County fire paramedics who found themselves trapped inside the stolen vehicle escaped serious injury. The unidentified patient took control of the ambulance about 2 p.m. while the paramedics were in the back doing paperwork after having dropped off another patient. Uh, DeKalb Fire Battalion Chief Christopher Morrison Jr. said the man came out of the hospital dressed in a gown and rubber gloves, jumped in the front seat, locked the doors, and took off. <laughs> the suspect looked through the little window into the back and told them to be quiet and hold on. <laughs> Let me guess, is this a guy with like the light bulb up his pooper, you know? <laughs> And or some small rodent, I don't small, know. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, why would you do this? Oh, geez. They had somewhere to go. <laughs> uh, be quiet and hold on. Oh, man. So, there you go. So, we still don't know who this guy is? No, no. Uh, oh, my goodness. That's funny. Yeah, so we got spitting llamas and patients stealing ambulances and... It's all bad down south. Well, <laughs> not all bad. I mean, I, we, we did have the, the, the female soldiers at well, yeah, being honored down south. That's true. And uh, to commemorate that, we're going to go full circle here and do Fort Campbell weather. Right now, it is 70 degrees, partly cloudy, winds out of the northeast at 6 miles an hour with a humidity of 83%. Oh, yeah. 
Ouch. Today they're expecting a high of 75, partly uh, partly cloudy, partly clowny. Uh, chance of rain 10%. Winds out of the north northeast at 8 miles an hour with a humidity of 66%. And tonight with a low of 58 degrees, partly cloudy. Uh, winds out of the north northeast at 6 miles an hour with a humidity of 80%. So there you go. Holy shit, we knocked this bugger out quick. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Uh, let me get back to whatever we were doing prior to this. Attempting to wake up. Well, there you go. Well, you got anything planned? So we can we actually have enough time to do a little tiny bullshit session if we so choose. Uh, no, we do need to go to town and pick up something. I don't remember. Uh, the bedding? Is that what it was? Yeah, the the, the clear plastic bedding. There. The clear plastic? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. supposed to be fluffier and less dusty. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't have anything planned, but I know there was something on the, <coughs> on the table. Alrighty. Well, today's Monday, and all of a Monday. We don't have them, and I'm feeling it. Yeah. Um... So I guess that means we'll see the rest of you on Thursday. So have a good week. Keep your powder dry. <laughs>